This is the second part of our video where we explore the country of Uzbekistan and its two cities, Tashkent and Samarkand. As you already know that we have spent the last five days exploring various parts of Kazakhstan, that includes the Almaty city, going to Shimkant, Turkistan, Aksu Zabagli, before we crossed the land borders into Uzbekistan and came to Tashkent. Now it is day six of our journey and we left Aksu Zabagli from Ruslan's guest house with Muhammad Ali to the Zibek Zoli border via Shimkar. Hum logo ne Uzbekistan visa ke liye pehle hi apply kar diya tha. So you can go on the official website of Uzbekistan and apply for a e-visa. This will cost you $21 if you are an Indian passport holder. If you have any other passport, I will link to the government official website in the description box below and you can go check it out. But if you have an Indian passport, hai, you will need an e-visa. So apply that beforehand because it took approximately 10 days for it to come online. The total time that it took to reach the Zibek Zoli border was approximately 3 hours. Now, if you want to convert Kazakhstan Tenge to the Uzbekistani Som, you can do on this side of the border because once you cross the border, I did not find anybody converting it. If you have USD convert USD, so you can go into the city of Tashkent and you can get it converted anywhere. But for Kazakhstan Tenge, if you want local cash immediately, this side of the border is where you get your currency exchanged. Now the total duration that we took from exiting Kazakhstan and getting the exit stamps to entering Uzbekistan and getting the entry stamps was approximately 45 minutes. You don't have to do anything much. You have to keep your passport and your e-visa to enter into Uzbekistan handy. They ask you a few questions. And that's about it. And then there is a scanner for the bags to be checked. There is no problem and the immigration is very smooth. During the time that Tashkent was under the Russian Empire, it grew. It profited a lot from the Silk Route before that. But in 1966, approximately 1966, there was a huge earthquake in Tashkent that destroyed the entire city. And then it was rebuilt as a model Soviet city. I was very excited to explore the city and see what it has to offer. So we crossed the borders and we were hurled by a number of taxi drivers. So you have to keep one thing that you know, when you are having a conversation with them, make sure that you are haggling and you are bargaining a lot because the first taxi driver that uh, came to us, he told us somewhere around $20-$25 to take us to our hotel. And he finally agreed at $10. I think $10 was also a little bit high on the higher side. But I wanted to just get out of that area because, you know, there were quite a few homeless women. And while I had food on me and I wouldn't mind giving money as well, they literally held both my hands and they wouldn't let me go. And I just wanted to get out of this scenario. And that is why I was like, fine, just take $10 um, and let's just go to the hotel. It took us somewhere around 20 minutes for us to reach Hotel Uzbekistan. We were staying there for one night. Now, Hotel Uzbekistan is one of the most uh, luxury hotels from back in the communist era. It is centrally located and it has a very 1970s imposing Soviet structure. The average cost per stay was somewhere around $98. So we freshened up and we decided that we'll explore the city. So we went out and uh, Amit started walking ahead of me. He was quite a few steps ahead of me. And then I had another incident with a homeless girl. I did not have money or food to give her, but she literally started scratching both my hands and I got really scared. So I just turned back and went back to the hotel. There I met these two university students, Firauza and Swada. They were really lovely to talk to. They wanted to take my interview because they had an English project going on in their university. So we did that. And after that, they asked me where I had to go. I told them that we were going to Chorzu Bazaar. Turns out that they were also going there. They asked us to come with them. So we went to the Amir Temur metro station. They got the tickets and they refused to take the money from us. And they dropped us to the Chorzu Bazaar. Now, Chorzu Bazaar is a very old bazaar in Tashkent. You can find food, handicrafts, clothing and a lot of other items there. It's a very old structure which was built when Tashkent was a part of USSR. So you can see a lot of Islamic aesthetics, 
but still a lot of Soviet style structure to it. And it's a beautiful place to be. You can buy a lot of things from there. So the first thing that we could see in front of us were the samsas, which are a popular food in Uzbekistan. And it's really yum. Uh, it's a samosa kind of a thing, which is uh, cooked in the tandoor. And it's the best tasted hot. So please do try out the samsas. We also tried out the shashlik and we ate a lot of food in Chorzu Bazaar basically. From there, it was already turning dark. So we thought we'll go to the Hazrati Imam complex. The one thing that I was looking forward to was the Quran of Uthman. Now it is one of the oldest Quranic scriptures that are that is kept in Tashkent. It is believed that it is the Quran of Caliph of Uthman who was murdered from behind when he was reading this Quran. It is also UNESCO heritage. Somewhere in the 19th century, scientists from St. Petersburg wanted to test out, test out its authenticity. They did that. It was authenticated that it was one of the oldest scriptures. And then it was returned to Tashkent and that is kept in the Hazrati Imam complex. Now, by the time we reached there, it was uh, quite dark and I did not find anybody who could help me find where this is. I really wanted to see it because it is also said that you can find blood stains of the Caliph of Uthman because you know he was murdered while he was reading this particular Quran. I missed on this but if you are going there I would definitely suggest that you check this out. From there we took a cab and we went to the Boulevard Street which is the intersection of the Amir Temur and the Independence Square. It's easy to find you can ask any of the locals and they'll guide you. It is lighted with bulbs you will find live music food trucks photographers handicrafts and a lot of activities for kids and families you will find locals and travelers alike i've bought a lot of souvenirs from there we also got a lot of pretty photographs clicked and we spent a lot of time in the boulevard street so from there we packed a couple of burgers and we went back to our hotel which was just walking distance from there on the top floor of Hotel Uzbekistan, you can find its bar and restaurant and you can see the entire city from up to, uh, from there. So we went there, we ordered a couple of things. And we sat there for a while, enjoying the beauty that you could see outside of that thing. So next day, we woke up early in the morning because we had a train to catch from uh, to Samarkand. We had a cup of coffee. Now, unfortunately, it was just 10 minutes left for the breakfast that was included in my room rent. And... The person there literally forced me to pay for the coffee if I wanted it 10 minutes earlier, which I personally did not like. But I paid 25,000 and by the time he did give me the coffee, everything was anyway ready for the breakfast and I could have just had, had it there. My personal experience was hot with Hotel Uzbekistan wasn't a great experience or something that I recommend to everybody. So Hotel Uzbekistan is something that you can definitely skip on as your place to stay. So from there, we took a cab and we went to the Tashkent Janubi station. Now, Tashkent has two stations. One is North Station and one is the South Station. So be very careful what's written on your ticket and please go there. Now, I had a lot of expectations with Tashkent, but Tashkent was a disappointing capital. And uh, I personally like the places that I go, but Tashkent is definitely not one of them. If Tashkent is on your itinerary to Uzbekistan, I think you can definitely skip on it. We booked the train tickets to Samarkand on the day that we arrived to Tashkent while sitting in the hotel Uzbekistan. You can go to the official website that I leave in the description box below and find the trains that run to Samarkand. There are three types of trains that run to Samarkand. One is a slow train, one is a fast train and one is the Afrosiab. If you take the slower trains, they will take somewhere around four to five hours. The fast trains take somewhere around three hours to reach Samarkand and Afrosiab takes somewhere around two hours to reach Samarkand. We wanted to experience the Afrosiab train but we couldn't because there were no tickets whatsoever. So I recommend that if you want to travel by an Afrosiab train, you book the train tickets at least two to three weeks before you arrive. We booked a, we booked a seating train. It's also called a Sidiachi. That's what you will see on their official website while you're booking a ticket. The train was spacious. There was enough space to keep our luggage there was a clean bathroom there was a restaurant where you would grab something to eat and there was also usb charging ports there to charge your devices so everything was pretty nice in the train and we reached samarkand within i think three hours as soon as we reached samarkand we went out of the station and we booked a yandax go to our hotel the name of the hotel was hotel ishonk and this is something that i would definitely recommend you guys to stay in 
it is um centrally located it's in between a park so it's quiet and it's beautiful whether it's morning or whether you want some alone time at night it's the perfect place to be it's run by a family and uh, they are also very helpful when it comes to anything it costed me 88 dollars for two nights and they charge a city tax of four dollars make sure that you are taking an invoice for the city tax because you will need that if you are going to be buying a sim card or renting a car that's to showcase that you are a tourist and you are not a person who lives in Samarkand. Okay, so it's very important that you have that invoice with you. So after a very disappointing experience in Tashkent, I did not have much expectations from Samarkand. Samarkand, however, is one of the oldest cities in Central Asia and one of the major cities for trade routes from China and India as well. So I was definitely looking forward to the rich history. So once we checked in and we cleaned up, we decided that we will start our journey with Gur A. Amir. Now we booked a cab, we put it on the Google Maps and we went somewhere in Samarkand, I'm not sure. So I recommend that you please do not use uh, Google Maps in Samarkand, use Tugis. Now we realized that Gure Amir was actually walking distance from the hotel that we were staying in. So we went there and it's a beautiful structure from the outside. It is also known as the tomb of the king. This is the final resting place of Amir Temur his two sons, his two grandsons and his teacher Mir Baraka, Mir Said Baraka. We'll look at the beautiful tile work, the mosaics, the gold inscriptions and it will steal your heart. It's a perfect place for photography as well. The one thing that I definitely recommend you to do is to get a guide. We did that. So it costed us 50,000 Uzbekistani som to get a guide and the entrance fee is approximately 25,000 Uzbekistani som. So one of the exciting things that the guide told us about this particular place was, um, you know, just two days before the Nazis marched into the Soviet Union, there was this archaeologist called Mikhail who decided that, you know, he wants to take the grave out, take Amir Temur's grave out. So he did that, took it back with him to Russia. When he opened the grave, it said that it was inscribed that whoever touches or whoever opens this grave will release an invader who is worse than Timur himself. And Stalin believed in the curse of Timur and ordered a reburial in 1942 with all the rights again. And this is a month before Soviet Union's victory at Stalingrad. So, you know, you will find such interesting stories if you're going to be hiring a guide. I definitely recommend you do that at Guriam. After spending almost two hours in Gure Amir, we decided we will go to the Rekistan Square. That's again walking distance from Gure Amir. Now, Rekistan in Persian means a sandy place that is a desert. But Rekistan Square consists of three madrasas. One that is in front of you is the Tilia Kori. On the right is Sherdor. And on the left is the Uluk Beg. You will be fascinated looking at the huge courtyards, the dormitories where the students used to stay, which are now being converted into souvenir shops and the mosque. You will see the Samarkand's traditional tile work, the mosaics. And please do not forget looking at the ceilings because, because you will see it all gold plated in a beautiful blue color and it will definitely steal your heart. Entry fee to the Registan Square is 40,000 Uzbekistani som. They have a cultural show at uh, Sher Dor Madrasa, which happens every day at 6 p.m. This is something that you don't want to miss. The fee for the ticket is somewhere around 70,000 Uzbekistani so. Once you have seen this cultural show, Please do not go outside the campus of the Rekistan Square because at 9 p.m. every night there is a light and a laser show that happens which is another beautiful thing to witness. So while we were walking back from here to our hotel, we packed a couple of shashliks from the lane in front of the Rekistan Square. That's where we ate most of our food while our stay in Samarkand. So it's something that I definitely recommend. So we packed a few things from there and we went back to our hotel, ate and slept for the day. 
The next day in the morning, we woke up early. We had a lavish breakfast at the Hotel Ishong and we left for Shahi Zinda. Now, Shahi Zinda is something that I was so looking forward to. Shahi Zinda literally translates into the living king. While Shahi Zinda is the mausoleum for many relatives of Amir Timur, this is not why it's called Shahi Zinda. Now, there is a legend behind this which says that Kusum ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad who came to Samarkand in the 7th century to spread Islam, his grave is in the Shahi Zinda complex. Now, it's his final resting place as well and that is why in respect of him, Amir Timur decided to name the entire complex Shahi Zinda. This is where you will find the richest style work of Samarkand. There are brilliant mosaics, the majolica, the terracotta work is a testament to the craftsmanship during the Temur's time. However, it was controversially restored in 2005 and the majority of what you see is not original but restored. The entry fee to Shahi Zinda is 20,000 Uzbekistani som and you can come come and go out of the campus as many times as you want in one day. It's also a photography heaven. So if you are somebody who loves to click photo photos of places or of yourself, this is the place to be. So be there early in the morning if you want this place to have less crowd because it gets overcrowded by the time it's 10 o'clock in the morning. And up until sunset, you will not find this place empty. So there are only two times that I recommend going to Shahi Zinda. One is early in the morning when it opens up and one is late in the evening when there is sunset. From there, we went to Sayab Bazaar. Sayab Bazaar is one of the largest and the oldest markets in Samarkand. You will find a lot of local items, food items, clothing, souvenirs and everything that you probably have in your head, you will find it here. Now the one tip that I can give you is that don't buy from the periphery of the market. Please go inside the lanes, climb upstairs and go where you can only find locals. This is where you will get the, get the things at a rate which locals buy it for and not get um, cheated as a tourist. Once we spent enough and more time in Sayab Bazaar, we went up to the Bibi Khayam Mosque. This was the mosque that Amir Temur wanted to be the most magnificent mosques in the Central Asia. However, he pushed the architect and the builders to their limits because of which there were a lot of problems in the building. The tile work started falling down, the dome collapsed and then it had to be finally restored later on. It's a beautiful mosque with a huge courtyard. Not a lot of people go so it's also a place where you can spend some time alone and it's also great for photographers. Now there is also one very interesting story behind the Bibi Khayam Mosque. So it is said that Bibi Khayam was his favorite wife and while Timur was away in India, she decided that she will surprise Timur by finishing up the mosque. But the architect was delaying it because he fell in love with her and he wanted to kiss her on the cheek. And she kept denying it but finally she got tired of all the arguments and she agreed but the kiss left a mark on her cheek that Timur saw. It is said that he basically killed the architect. I'm not sure what he did with the wife, but there is a mosque in her name and right opposite the mosque, you can see the Bibi Khayam mausoleum where, which is the final resting place of his wife. Now, once we were done with this, on the opposite side of the road, you will find Hazrat Khizir Mosque. This is associated with the immortal prophet Hazrat Khizir himself. While this does not boast Samarkand's beautiful tile work, the mosaics, but you will be thrilled looking at the woodwork in this mosque. So this is something that I recommend you to go and check out as well. The one interesting thing about this mosque is that it was destroyed by Genghis Khan and then it was restored later on as well. Now by this time it was already evening so we went back. On the way we stopped at the Dekistan Square. This is when we saw the light and the, the, light and the laser show. We went back to our hotel and uh, we were hungry so we didn't know what to do. We realized that there is this cafe called Cafe Magister so we went there, we ordered a pizza which was bad so I'm not sure um, why so many people recommend Cafe Magister. I did not like the food at all. So behind it there was a place for a donor. So we went there, grabbed a couple of wraps for ourselves and called it a day because we wanted to wake up early to catch our train from Samarkand to Tashkent. At 12.39 in the afternoon, we were leaving Uzbekistan. That is a train from Tashkent directly to Almaty 2 station. This is something that we booked 
from the Uzbekistan railway platform as well. Now the tickets from Tashkent to Samarkand and Samarkand to Tashkent costed us somewhere around 2746 and the train tickets from Tashkent to Almaty costed us somewhere around 9800 or 10,000. You can see the exact number on the screen. Now besides this there are a few things that I, I want to quickly cover. First is the SIM card. So we did not take a SIM card because while we were leaving Aksu Zabagli in Kazakhstan, we activated roaming on our phones on our Kazakhstan SIM. So that's what worked for us. So if you are traveling from Kazakhstan to Uzbekistan, you can have that done. Or if you're traveling from Uzbekistan to Kazakhstan, you can have it activated and you can use the Uzbeki SIM in Kazakhstan as well. So that's one of the options. If not, then you can always buy a local SIM from the market. The second up is currency. There are lots of ATMs both in Tashkent and in Samarkand. So you can always um, withdraw the money. And if you're carrying cash, you can always get it converted. You will find a lot of conversion centers. The next up is uh, what you need when you are in Samarkand. So I would say that um, please do have Yandex Go app to book taxis. Two gifts to ensure that the locations that you're going to accurately marked because most of it is not accurately marked on google maps the next is safety um i felt samarkand as well as tashkent was pretty safe especially samarkand in my experience the people were very friendly the locals were friendly we spent a lot of time talking to them and clicking pictures with them so if you are dressed modestly if you are not overstepping and uh, if you are respecting their culture i think there is nothing to worry about the best time to visit Samarkand as well as Tashkent would be somewhere around May to June or from September to October when the weathers are pleasant. We went in the first week of October and the weather was very good. It was not hot and it was not cold. So you could, you know, be at rest. The total amount that we spent in three nights in Uzbekistan, that is two nights in uh, Samarkand and one night in Tashkent is approximately 30 to 35,000. This includes the train tickets from Tashkent to Samarkand and back and from Tashkent to Almaty as well. In the next part of this video, we'll talk about our train experience from Tashkent to Almaty and then from Almaty to Sati while we explored the Sharon Canyon, Kolsai Lake, Scandi Lake as well as the Isik Lake before we leave back for Delhi. So if you like this video guys, don't forget to click like, share it with your friends and please do subscribe. If you have any questions about traveling to Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan, leave a comment below and I would love to help you out. Thank you.